In one of my previous videos, I made a few minor modifications to my Arcade 1UP Marvel Pinball Table, including a new apron decal and a custom back glass featuring the Fantastic Four. While those look great, I wanted the machine to make a bigger visual impact, so I decided to replace the buttons with LEDs and ordered new custom vinyl for the rest of the cabinet. This video explains how I did the button modification, while a future video will cover the vinyl application. You'll note that since I had to take the machine apart for both projects, I did them at the same time, so don't be surprised that the look of the cabinet changes throughout this video. The pinball table comes with a plastic coin door, and it uses regular white push buttons to call up menus and table guides. Since these are ordinary buttons, I decided to swap them for real arcade coin buttons to improve the look. I bought my coin buttons from Graphics Arcade on Etsy. You can buy them elsewhere, but I like this seller's buttons because he includes pre-wired harnesses for the LEDs. For the flipper and launch buttons, I installed 28mm LED push buttons. I ordered one red and two white buttons from eBay seller Nifty Tech LLC. These buttons drop right into the Arcade 1UP holes and the spade lugs used on the machine's wiring harnesses connect easily. From the same seller, I also ordered three additional encoder wiring harnesses that I modified to supply power to the LEDs. Like my other Arcade 1UP projects involving LEDs, I tapped into the 5 volt marquee power supply found on this machine in the back box. From LEDsupply.com, I ordered a 1 meter power cable, a 2 way splitter, and a 4 way splitter. From Amazon, I purchased a 2.1 male to 1.35 female adapter, as well as a 2.1 female to 1.35 male adapter. I also purchased a pack of 2.1 millimeter female plugs with pigtails to make the power connections for the LED buttons. I started the project by removing the chrome rails from along the glass and pulled out the apron board so that I could access the back of the coin door. If you're doing this project on the attack from Mars table, note that it has two additional screws that hold the apron in place. I also removed the access panel from the back box and the body of the table. To power the LEDs, I needed to tap into the marquee power supply. This uses 1.35 millimeter power connection, so I used a two-way splitter and two adapters to make the new harness, connecting it to the marquee and the plug port. To run the 5 volt LED power to the front of the cabinet, I used the 1 meter length of 2.1 millimeter power cable. Threading the cable through the body of the cabinet is easy with the panel removed, however it's a tight fit to get it through the narrow opening between the body and the back box. To make it work, I had to unplug the display and power cables, then remove the back box and the wood plate it mounts to from the body of the table. I then threaded the power cable through the holes between other cables and replaced the plate and back box. I plugged the power cable into the open end of the two-way splitter and attached the four-way splitter to the opposite end at the front. To work in the tight spaces inside the cabinet, I highly recommend getting a shorty Phillips head screwdriver. I definitely needed it on this project. To remove the door, I first removed the plug board and the white plastic mount that holds the on-off volume switches. Both of these are held in place with screws. I then popped out the two white buttons and disconnected them from their harnesses. I labeled the harnesses with tape to make reassembly later easy. While I was at it, I removed the flipper buttons as well. The molded plastic coin door is held to the front panel with four screws. I removed the door and then tested the coin buttons in the holes. The coin buttons have a 24 millimeter shaft, but the holes in the plastic coin door are for 28 millimeter buttons. The coin buttons alignment pins fit just to the outside of the molded sleeve in the door holes. I used a square to mark the vertical center line, then drilled holes slightly larger than the pins directly adjacent to the sleeve. The larger holes keep the buttons centered, but they also allow for some minor adjustments. After inserting the button into the hole, I used some sponge rubber weather seal, trimmed to size with a pair of scissors, to fill the remaining gap and hold the button tight. Once both buttons were installed in the door, I screwed it back into the cabinet, then applied the locking nuts. While the coin door buttons I ordered came with power cables with spade connectors, I needed to modify the Arcade 1UP switch harness with spades that fit quarter inch tabs. I bought a pack of quarter inch spade connectors from Home Depot rated for 16 to 22 gauge wire. I clipped off the small spade connectors and then stripped the ends of the wire. Crimp connectors are color coded by wire size. For these connectors, I placed the red sleeve of the spade into the crimping pliers at the red connector notch and squeezed it tight. 
The crimper crushes small metal clamps in the connector that lock the wires securely in place. With the harnesses modified, I attach the wires to the switch. The power connections for the LED are on the outside of the switch. LEDs will only light one way. If the LED doesn't light, reverse the two wires and try again. The switch itself has three connection points, but you only use two of them the very top one and the one in the middle. The switches mount into the back of the buttons with a twist lock motion. Place the switch into the back of the button in a near vertical position, then twist. They click when they're in the proper place. I then connected the switch harness to the plug board and the LED power harness to two of the leads on the four-way splitter. With the coin buttons in place, I replaced the on, off, and volume switches and the plug board into the back of the coin door. Next, I installed the LED push buttons into the cabinet. I used the two white buttons for the flippers. Like the coin buttons, these also have locking nuts to hold them to the cabinet. As I installed each button, I attached its switch leads. The switch tabs are near the center of the button. The LED tabs run along one edge and are marked with positive and negative symbols molded into the plastic. The factory installed launch button has a lock nut that holds it to the cabinet. I replaced it with the red LED button by reversing this process. The new LED buttons have a protective plastic film on the push button. Peel this away before using them. The push buttons don't come with power connection wires. I made my own harnesses using the three spare encoder cables and two of the 2.1 millimeter pigtails. This part of the project requires a bit of soldering, and if you've never soldered anything before, don't panic. You can purchase simple soldering iron kits from places like Home Depot or Lowe's, and some even include the solder. If you can twist two wires together and hold your hands relatively steady, you can solder just about anything. I made a single power harness for the red launch button and a dual power harness for the white flipper buttons. First, I clipped the JST connector from one of the spare encoder cables. Next. I slipped a small piece of shrink tube down each leg of the wire to insulate the exposed ends of the spade connector. Shrink tubing is just like it sounds. It shrinks when you apply heat to it. Home Depot stocks it in the electrical aisle near the crimp connectors. I used the tip of my soldering iron to heat the tubing, shrinking it snugly around the exposed metal parts of the spade lug. This insulates them, preventing accidental short circuits. Once all six spade lugs were insulated, I stripped about a quarter inch of insulation from the ends of the encoder wires, then slipped another piece of shrink tubing onto the wire. For the dual connector, I grouped the pairs of wire by color and then placed a larger piece of shrink tubing over them. Next, I connected the encoder wires to one of the 2.1 millimeter pigtails. These come with the ends stripped already, so I paired up like colors and twisted the exposed wires together. To solder them, I held the wires in a clamp. Next, I applied a bit of rosin paste flux to the joint. I touched the tip of the soldering iron to the joint to heat it, and then melted a bit of solder onto the wires. The solder should flow between the wire strands easily. Once the joint had cooled, I slipped the shrink tubing over the exposed parts and heated it to seal everything up. Taking the finished harnesses back to the machine, I installed the power wires on the LED buttons and then connected them to the two remaining plugs on the four-way splitter. Excitedly, I powered up the game for a test. My coin buttons lit up immediately because I had already tested them, but the LEDs all failed to light. You'd think with a 50-50 chance to get it right, I'd have at least scored one out of three, but no such luck. I quickly reversed the power wires to the push buttons and the LEDs were all in business. I reassembled the cabinet and it was time to play some pinball. Obviously, by the time the button project got to this point, a whole lot of vinyl application work was already done. But even without it, I love how the table looks with the LEDs. It really makes what was a good machine to start with even more upscale. The button project was easy to do. The hardest part was actually waiting for all the materials to come. But while I was at it, I ordered extra pieces. So I plan to add LED buttons to my Attack from Mars table next. For more on modifying the Arcade 1UP Marvel Pinball Table, check out my back glass video on my YouTube channel, Pop Art Studios. And watch for the final install video on this machine coming soon.